Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam Ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'na habata fillah A very long question was asked from one of our brothers from Germany And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Bless us with ikhlas, with abad And bless us in him With fiqh fi deen وفهم. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ikhlas With the bad ala sunnah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam And the question, bil ikhtisar, a summarized version of what the brother asked He asked about, as it is well known that the probably the largest Muslim community there is made up of brothers and sisters from uh, from Turkey and we also know that many of them uh, as the general creed that they are influenced from in Turkey is various forms of Sufism and also due to the politics the position of Saudi Arabia and the history of the Ottoman Empire there are many Shubahat and doubts that circulate amongst the common people and where the people describe Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah as being Wahhabiyyah and refer to Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah as being really Sufi or various other sectarian practices describing them as the mainstream of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and they also as is known from many of the Sufi groups and sects around the world as they describe Ahl Sunnah as being uh, Khawarij and Takfiri but when we study the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we put with the scholars of Ahl Sunnah Wal Jama'ah those who traverse the path of the Salaf al Salih those who illustrate from their statements and the way they approach the religion, their methodology, that they are in accordance with the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam in Madhab, in Fiqh Fiddin, in how they approach the Nasus or the text and in Aqidah and Creed. So the brother mentioned that he is a new revert and he found confusion because he has a lot of brothers around him who are from Turkey and that these brothers are mainly affected by Tasawwuf and they spread Shubahat and he is very confused about issues of Tawassal and issues which is coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we're going to talk about that a little more in detail and about seeking intercession from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and about the proper belief in al-asma'i wa sifat you know the divine names and attributes of Allah azza wa jal and the place of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab is Salafiyya from Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab is it from before him, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, and that's where it came from, or otherwise. So we're going to try to briefly address this as best as we can, and there's so many texts out there. And in fact, I will also advise that you can get free uh, on the internet, because I did deal with a lot of these issues in my master's thesis, and you can download it for free. Just do a Google search and type in Craig Green, uh, The Creed of Takfir or the Khawarij and Takfir, and you can find it, uh, a free copy, somewhere on the internet. So first and foremost, one of the questions he said, is Salafiya really the method, uh, method of the first three generations of the Salaf al -Saleh? Uh Is it a movement, as we mentioned, from Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab? And what is the issue with regarding to, uh, Tawassal? 
is it really Shirk Akbar? So it seems that he has one understanding of Tawassal, and we're going to talk about Tawassal Mishroor or Tawassal Mimnur, meaning the prohibited Tawassal and the allowable uh, Sharia based Tawassal. And we're going to define, and he said that he himself also found, he said, to be honest, from my point of view, it sounds like the Christians and Catholicism and Shirk with what these Sufis are telling him. But at the same time, he feels inclined towards their good manners and their spirituality and so on and so forth. And he said, it is really deeply confusing me. And sometimes I don't know and I don't know where to turn and I don't know what is Ahlul Sunnah, you know, what the uh, belief of Ahlul Sunnati will jama'ah. And that's in in essence, what the brother was asking. And in this regard, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clarified that we must follow the Sabila Mu'mineen. We must follow the Minhaj al Anbiya. And we must follow the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem وَمَنْ يَشَاكِكَ الرَّسُولَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيْنَ لَهُ هُدَى وَيَتَّبَعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نَوَلِّهِ مَنْ تَوَلَّى وَنُسْلِهِ جَهَنَّمْ وَسَاءَتْ مُصِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem And whoever disobeys the messenger after we have made clear for him Huda, guidance, or after he is, uh, you know, given, after clear guidance has been given, we yet tebe ghayr sabila mu'minin, and they follow, and he follows other than the sabila mu'minin, that we will give him or associate him with those who he associated with, those who he loved, those who he followed, and roast him in the fire, and what an evil destination. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered what? To follow the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the huda and the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah has shown us also that this is a sabil mu'mineen. The sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was sabil mu'mineen also is delil that who do we follow? The mu'mineen. And who are the mu'mineen? Who is the first of the mu'mineen? The sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiyallahu ta'ala majma'een. And they are the ru'us of the salaf al-salih. They are the heads of the salaf al-salih. And that... I'm sure that most of even the Sufis concur with. They agree with this. Most of the sects agree with that, except for those who curse the Sahaba and those who go against the Sahaba and fight the Sahaba I and mean, fight the Sahaba in belief and in taqad and differ with them in totality. But most of the groups find esteem in saying that they are following the Salaf. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُحَاجِرِينَ وَالْإِنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ يَتَّبُعُونَ بِإِحْسَانِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُ وَعَدَّ لَهُمْ جِنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَجْرِي تَحْتِيَ الْأَنْهَارِ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, and the first from the Asabakun al Awalun from the Muhajirin wa Ansar, who are who? The Sahaba, Radiallahu Ta'ala Majmain. The Muhajirin are those who made Hijrah from Mecca to Medina. Well, Ansar are those Sahaba that were uh, greeting and became their companions in Medina, Radiallahu Ta'ala Majmain. Well, Ansar, well, Adina Tabahum bi Hassan. So that's the deal that shows us, and those who follow them in righteousness. So that means. Those who follow the Sabila Mu'mineen, as we mentioned in the first ayat, those who follow the Salaf al-Salih, that they will be not just restricted to those first three generations. The first three generations, that's the codification. That means that's when the Aqidah and 
uh, the creed and the belief became uh, as a set in principles and set in belief as far as those issues in Aqidah that you'll find in, uh, in the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah in the first three generations. And in the later generations, they followed that. The later generations from Ahl Sunnah. And that means all the way, وَلَذِينَ تَبُعُمْ بِيَحْسَانِ إِلَى يَوْمِ الدِّينِ And those who follow them until the Day of Judgment. And the ayat, وَلَذِينَ تَبُعُمْ بِيَحْسَانِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْ Those who follow them in righteousness. So this is those who follow the Salaf. You know? And they follow them in righteousness. And Allah is pleased with them, and they are pleased with Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah has prepared for them Jannah, paradise underneath which rivers flow, that they will dwell in forever, and that is the great success. That is the great success. And that lets us know what? The, the success comes in following the Salaf. وَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمْ خَيْرَ نَسْقَرْنِي ثُمَّ الَّذِينِ يَلُونُهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينِ يَلُونُهُمْ The Prophet ﷺ said, as is reported in uh, Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, the best people are those who, uh, of my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. So that lets us know again, the Sabil al-Mu'mineen, which is the Salaf al That is Dalil, directly from the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, to follow the Salaf, and that they are who? They're the best of generations. And Sheikh Abdullah Hafidullah uh, Ta'ala Sheikh Abdullah Ibn Abdul Hamid Al Athari Hafidullah Ta'ala he mentions he says wa tahdidu zamani laysa shartan fi dhalik bil shart huwa muwafiq al kitabi wa sunna fi al aqidati wa al ahkam wa al suluki bi faham al salaf فكل من وافق الكتاب والسنة فهو من من التب من اتباع السلف وإن باعد بينهم وبينهم مكان والزمان ومن خالفهم فليس منهم وإن و وإن عاش بين ذهرانيهم beautiful beautiful statement that's why I read it in Arabic so let's go to the beautiful uh, understanding of this he said in explaining the hadith we just mentioned he said, and the restriction of time is not a condition in this, meaning in condition in gaining a lost pleasure and in following the Salaf as But to be from the Salaf, that means you're from the first three generations. But to follow the Salaf, to follow the Salafi menhaj, the Salafi path, that's not restricted by time. And it's not conditional. That is, you're in the first three generations. He said, rather, the condition is having agreeance, following the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah in your creed, in ahkam or rulings, in manners, saluk, oh, and, and understand, with the understanding of the salaf. That's the condition. So whoever is following and believing in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah, then he is from those who follow the Salaf. Even if he, uh, the time period is far away from the time in which they existed, in place and time. And whoever differs with them, then he's not from them. Even if he lived from amongst them, meaning he lived in the time of the Salaf, but he didn't follow the Salaf. There was Mukhalifin. There was Ahl Bid'ah during the time of the Salaf. That's when the time, that's when the, the early sects, the Qadriya began to appear. The Rafida, the, uh, the Khawarij, all of these groups in the, 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 the Ma'tazila and other groups, they began to appear. The Jahamiyyah, they began to appear. So early sects, they came during that time. So we don't consider them the Salaf al-Saleh. We don't con consider them the pious predecessors. We don't look to follow them. But we look to follow the Salaf al-Saleh. The righteous or pious predecessors. And there are so many ayat 
and so many ahadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَمَنْ يُعْتَيَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولُهُ فَأُولَيْكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالسِدَّقِينَ وَشُهَدَاءِ وَالصَّارِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَيْكَ رَفِيقًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, and whoever follows or whoever obeys Allah and the messenger, then though then they are those who Allah has favored, He's given His favor to. So just to follow the fact that you follow the, the Salaf and the follow uh, and obey Allah and His Messenger, this is tawfiq min Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a na'mah that Allah has favored you with. That they Allah has favored them to be with the Nabiin or will favor them to be with the Nabiin, with the prophets, with Siddiqeen, with the, the uh, truthful ones, with Shuhada and the martyrs, with Salihin, and the pious or the saints, if you will, but pious is probably a better way of uh, terminology. And those are what a beautiful, what beautiful companions they are. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us that by what? Obeying the law, obeying his matter, which means following the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we already mentioned the other ayats and hadith which show that following the Sabil al-Mu'mineen is following the Salaf al And there are so many ayats where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for example, fi kitab al kareem مَن يُعْتَيَ اللَّهَ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ وَمَن يُعْتَيَ رَسُولْ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ تَوَلَّى فَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ عَلَيْهِمْ حَفِيدًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and whoever uh, obeys the messenger, then they have obeyed Allah. And whoever turns away, then we have sent for them, uh, then we have sent you as a messenger uh, uh, over them, and uh, we, so we sent you as a messenger over them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fikita Abdul Kareem, Ya ayu aladina amanu a'ti allaha wa a'ti rasoola wa la tubtilu a'malakum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fikita Abdul Kareem, O you who believe, Allah is addressing the believers, Mu'mineen, a'ti Allah, obey Allah and obey as a messenger, and do not Make your deeds fruitless. Batal. Ibtal. Wutubtilu a'malakum. And do not make your deeds fruitless. Batal. No weight, no ajr. Meaning that you, if you don't obey in Allah, obey in His Messenger, who are you obeying except for the shaitan? If you're going against Allah, wa Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this affirms verse following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that part of, and following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is following and being obe obedient to Allah azza wa jal. And there are so many ayat and ahadith that show this. And the point was to show and illustrate the importance of following the Salaf. We had to establish that, that first and foremost, that the Salaf would be with us in their Aqidah. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, لا تزل طائفة من أمتي ظاهن إلى الحق لا حتى يأتيهم أمر اللهم على ذلك وكما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم In one narration, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, I think this is the narration in Muslim, he said, لا تزل طائفة من أمتي ظاهن إلى الحق There won't cease to be a group from my nation on the truth. Until the command of Allah, meaning Yom Al Qiyamah, comes, and they died upon this, they will they will be upon this. Meaning, Ahl Sunnah will be uh, apparent. They'll be mojud. They'll be in existence, and that could be anywhere around the world until Yom Al Qiyamah. The point of mentioning this is to establish that Salafis, Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, meaning Salafis Haqiqi, that they are really following and striving to follow the Book of Allah, be obedient to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa commands, and following the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
with the medheb in the understanding of the Salaf Asadi, that they are commanded and that their minhaj is about obedience to Allah and His Messenger وسلم, and the minhaj of the Salaf Asadi, not Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah, not Muhammad ibn Abdul Hab, Rahimahumullah Ta'ala, but the reason that Salafis have a love for those great Imams, and especially Shaykh Al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, is because of their, especially their revival of the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, their revival of following the Sabila, the Salaf, and call to Tawheed. And Shaykh Al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, especially there wasn't he was known that there wasn't a science that would be from amongst the Islamic sciences that people would ask him a question about that it seemed like that that was his specialty every science whether it be ling language whether it be aqidah whether it be fiqh and knowing the madhabs whether it be usul of fiqh whether it be qawaid fiqhia whether it, all the sciences that it seemed that that was could have been the only thing he knew because he was so proficient in in the sciences of Islam. And that's why we say Shaykh al-Islam. And that's why Salafis honor and respect and quote often from those Imams because of their adherence to the Salaf al But not that the Minhaj and the methodology begins with them. But it began with Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een wa salaf of this ummah and the salaf of salih. A tawassal as a linguistic term Qala ibn Faris and this is a well-known uh, linguist for uh, he was the author of a very important Arabic dictionary uh, known as the B uh, Mikayas uh, al Lugha, he explained as a linguistic term that uh, Tawassal it means a Ragba wa to desire something or request or want something. And Al-Wasil refers to Al-Ragib Ilallah Azza wa Jal wa huwa Al-Ragib Ilallah Azza wa Jal That Wasil, meaning the one who makes to Wasil is to desire is the one who desires to uh, draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then as in a, a, a terminology a Sharia a Sharia terminology, when we talk about uh, tawassal, we're talking about huwa tuqarrib Allah ta'ala bima shara'ahu fi kitabihi wa ala lisani rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min al-wajibat wa mustahabbat. So this is very important because I noticed our brother in his question, he said tawassal, meaning that he was defining tawassal as only the limited Understanding which is Tawassal Mimnur with the Sufis. But Tawassal, Ahl Sunni, believes in Tawassal. And we take the Tawassal, the Shar', the shar uh, definition, the definition as a Sharia term, which is seeking to draw nearer to Allah, the Almighty, it, with those things that He has legislated, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in His book, meaning the Quran. And on the tongue of his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. From those things which are wajib, those wajibat, those obligatory duties, and those uh, recommended duties. So meaning acts of ibadah. And following the sunnah of the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is tawassal. But not seeking intercession from him, or seeking intercession from the dead, or intercession even from the people of Barzakh. And so this is, to keep this short, when we talk about what we've heard from some of the people of Shubahat, some of the extreme Sufis and, and even lighter Sufis, is they'll say, no, you can make tawassal 
uh, by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam by um, in this life by maybe supplicating to him or what have you because he's not dead if you ask him and if you ask the and even they say the awliya and the salihin you know they use this as a hujjah they say Allah mentions that in the Quran that they're not dead Ahl Sunnah replies to the Shubahat by saying Naam they're alive in Al Barzakh but we don't know from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Kayfiyah the how of Al Barzakh we know and we believe that Al Barzakh exists and it's another stage after death life in the grave for most of us and either in the Adhaba uh, Qabr that you'll either be punished or you'll be have comfort in your grave. We believe in all of this, but we don't know the how, and we don't have Dalil from Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam or the Salaf of this Ummah from the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in that they sought intercession and sought to draw nearer to Allah by supplicating and interacting with either the dead or either those in Barzakh. We don't have authentic a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that say the Prophet that Umar radiallahu ta'ala or Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala or Uthman radiallahu ta'ala or uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala we don't have authentic athar of the Salaf that say that we should that they supplicated and practiced supplicating to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in fact we have contrary to that as we'll get into as in the hadith of uh the hadith of Umar radiallahu ta'ala or the athar, I believe it was Umar, in which he mentions that during the time of the Prophet sallallahu they used to ask the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for, you know, basically to supplicate that they would receive water, you know, they would receive rain. And after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi they didn't continue, so that shows that this is battle, this practice of tawassal that they understand tawassal, to seek from even the people in Barzakh, because why didn't the Sahaba continue to do that practice after the death of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Because he would be the best to continue to continue that practice. But they said we used to do that during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But after his death, we would do that with his uh, with uh, Ibn Abbas, I think, radiallahu taala And why? Because he was living. And he was a relative of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they used to ask him to supplicate to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala while he's living. Like if you go to someone you, a sheikh or somebody say, or someone you think, you know, is a good person and good for their ibadah, and you say, can you please pray for me because I'm, I'm going through the struggle. You're, you're, you're not praying to them. You're asking them to pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in addition to your own praise to Allah pray prayers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen you, to make you better, to increase your risk, to help you in your difficulties. And this is asking the living, not the dead. Nor is it asking the people of Abu Barzakh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Kitab al-Kareem, Ya yuradina amanu wa taqullaha wa abtahu ilayhi al wasila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Ma'idah, O you who believe Fear Allah and seek from Him a means. You know, seek from Him a means, a wasila, a means to come what? To come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to by worshiping Him to Barak wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al wasila ta ayyuhum akrab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem, and those he's talking about the righteous, his righteous servants. Those are the ones who supplicate desiring their Lord. They, they supplicate to their Lord desiring Him. Desiring him for, uh, to Him a means. So this is the way to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not by external means. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentions, and we already mentioned the hadith or the, uh, the athar that was uh, the athar of Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu that Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu mentioned 
about during the time that we used to uh, uh, you know seek to draw near uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by asking uh, uh, Abbas Ibn Abdul Muttalib to supplicate for them to supplicate for them to, to make it rain that they did this after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa, wa ala alihi wa sallam uh, and Shaykh al-Salaam ibn Taymiyyah mentions that Tawassal that it has uh, three different meanings if you will he said the first meaning is Tawassal bi ta'a it is seeking uh, it is Tawassal seeking to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with obedience to him and he said this is an obligation La yutim al iman illa bi that Iman is not achieved except that you do that, meaning that you have to be obedient to Allah. You have to pray five times a day. You have to fast the month of Ramadan. You have to make Hajj if you're able to do so. You have to do this ibadat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, your Iman, you, you don't have Iman. You can't have Iman and you don't pray, for example. Okay, that's, a, that's an example. That you have to make obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the objective, you know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al kareem He mentions, Tabarak wa ta'ala, about the ghaya of creation. Wa ma khalaftu al jinn wal ins illa li abudun. I have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. So our purpose that we're created is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is ta'atillah. And this is that this is what makes iman uh sound because if you just say you believe you're not completing iman because iman is composed of belief in the heart statements of the tongue and actions of the limbs the second way or the second meaning Sheikh al-Islam mentioned Sheikh al-Islam mentions uh, is that to wasl bi du'a bi du'ahi wa shafa'atihi uh, and, and, and this means to uh, seeking for the Messenger وسلم, to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make intercession for and for for the, the one who was asking him وسلم, and this is during the life of the Prophet وسلم, not the life in Al Barzakh, but the life when he وسلم, was on the earth. Meaning the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een going and say, Ya Rasulullah, Allah, and Ya Ja'alani minhum, as is mentioned in the hadith, in uh, the hadith uh, of one of the companions radiallahu ta'ala anhum majma'een who came to the Prophet sallallahu and, or when the Prophet sallallahu was talking about the 70,000 that would enter Jannah بغير حساب ولا عذاب that they'll enter Jannah without any reckoning, any accounting or punishment and I think his name was Ukasha and he said uh, Ya Rasulullah Allah and Ya Jalani Minhum O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa please supplicate to Allah he didn't say, Messenger of Allah, you make me. He said, Ya Rasulullah, uh, Ed'u Allah in Yaj'alani minhu. O Messenger of Allah, please supplicate to Allah to make me one of them. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Sabbaqaka biha Ukasha. Ukasha has already preceded you <laughs> in asking this, and you know. So, this shows us that this wasn't from the actions of the Sahaba or the Salaf al to supplicate to the Prophet in Ar Barzakh or the saints or the Shuhada, the martyrs or anyone else for that matter but rather to Allah alone and seeking his Shafa'a from the Prophet uh, that this would, the seeking of the Shafa'a is something that was uh, you're not supplicating to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and asking him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the ghaib but rather this was during the lifetime of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for that shafa'a on yawm al-qiyamah 
And the third meaning is to wassail with the meaning of swearing. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> By <clears throat> the uh, swearing by the, as they say, that uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam by the person or the status of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as is mentioned in the question, and Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah mentions. He said, فَهَذَا هُوَ الَّذِي لَمْ تُكُونَ الصَّحَابَةَ يَفْعَلُونَهُ فِي الْإِسْتِسْقَاءِ وَنَحْوِهِ He said that this is something that the, the Sahaba رضي الله تعالى عنهم مجمعين did not do uh, they did not do even in seeking for rain they didn't uh, supplicate they didn't say to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم or even to supplicate to Allah by saying by the status of your Prophet or by the person of your prophet, or like this. They didn't do this during the time of the life of the Prophet Wasallam, or after his death. So if we don't have a precedence from the Salaf, why would we do that? That would be a bid'ah. And the types of tawassal, a tawassal, there's tawassal mishru' and tawassal mimnu' as we mentioned. A tawassal mishru' uh, some of the ways is to make a uh, tawassal, you know, seeking co coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by His divine names and attributes, meaning to make du'a by Allah, uh, by the divine names and attributes of Allah, calling upon Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rahim, Ya Rahman, give me mercy, you know, have mercy upon me. Or tawassal be uh, a'mal salih or making, seeking to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with righteous deeds. Or, uh, make it to us be du'a salihin. Now this is where we differ with Ahlul Tasawwuf. In that we mean, and the Aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah is to make to is to seek to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this, the righteous people that are present. For example, going to a scholar, going to a, a student of knowledge or some person you think that is a righteous person and you say, so-and-so, can you please make dua for me? Not that you are to, you're not, you're still going to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this is also known, uh, one of the types of tawassal, mishroor, the legal or legislated ways of making tawassal, that you can do that. You could ask because the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in used to do that during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And those are some of the tawassal al-mishroor, the legislated types of tawassal. And as we mentioned, the tawassal al-mimnur, some of the ways we already mentioned, but one of the most severe in which we find and that is the people who seek uh, intercession from the dead, regardless of what their argument is, going to the graves of the saints and saying, "Hey, they're really alive because they're righteous." For one, we don't know the we don't know the status of those people, especially if they're not from the Sahaba of the Allah Taala and those promised Jannah. We don't know how they met Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Did on their deathbed? We only we we can't make a, a judgment about the hereafter. So he could have been a righteous person all of his life. He could be a well-known scholar, a scholar known for his ilm, his fiqh, and his piety, his wara, his taqwa. But we don't know his status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't know if he had riya. We don't know what was in his heart. So we don't judge that he's in Jannah. So then how is it that we can then infer that he's in Jannah first, first mistake. Number two, that we're going to go, to, we're going to supplicate to him. This is another severe mistake and shirk and this is the major shirk regardless of whether it's to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam yes we say this is shirk so this is a big difference because how do you distinguish especially as a convert you know we left as a revert we left shirk those of us who had a, a religion before that were in the church for example we left that consciously because we didn't understand why are you supplicate my church that I used to belong to, that my family belongs to, they supplicated to Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam. And we love Jesus. 
Alayhi salatu wasalam. We don't supplicate to him. So how is it I'm just going to replace Jesus and that shirk with a new shirk of supplicating? What would be the difference? The Christians, if they supplicate to Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam, and say, in the name of Jesus, they say this. Well, if this to us, as the Sufis claim, is permissible to say, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, give me this, bless my barren wife to have a baby, and this and that and the other. Uh, uh, if that's permissible, why wouldn't this other to us? And if you can go to the grave to the saints, then why is it, what would make that difference? What's the difference between going to Jesus, who is much higher in status than any of those saints. What's the difference? Why do you call that shirk? If you call that shirk, and if you don't call that shirk, then there's no Dalal after Dalal. There's no misguidance after misguidance. Khalas, you <laughs> disbelieve in Allah wa Rasul. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is a very serious thing. And why... I hope that that was clear. There's so much more to say, but I, I don't want to make this any longer than it already has been. That I hope that's clear about the issue of Tawassal and uh, how the Tawassal that we see from some of these people is, a is shirk. It's shirk. And that it's a very dangerous thing. And I hope that also we've established the importance of following the Salaf of Saleh and that the ibra bi haqaiq lisa bi musamiyat, that the reality is in the substance, not in the name. And that it's not, we say as Salafis, that it's not about uh, Sheikh Muhammad ibn al Wahhab and whatever took place in history from the various perspectives of history, the Turkish Ottoman Empire, they have their, their perspectives. You have perspectives from other people who were mostly the people who believed in the dead and so forth. They, you know, Dahlan, for example, he wrote a treatise called Fitna to Wahhabiya, the Fitna of the Wahhabis, which is a very famous treatise. And I spoke about it in my research. And really, he wrote this 50 years after Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab and Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab what he wrote in Keshav Shubahat is a refutation of what this man claimed about him 50 years later. 50 years later. So that's what's amazing. His, 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 why? Because his kalam, Muhammad, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Wahhab Rahim Allah Ta'ala, what he said in Keshav Shubahat was standing on the principles of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, dealing with the Shubahat of those people from who say La ilaha illallah who had fell into shirk. But he deals with that. You know, all their hajjaj, all their so-called evidence, it, he, the imam himself refuted it. And if you go back to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah and the understanding of the Salaf al-Salih, you'll find that it's refuted. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and forgive us for our many sins and any mistakes that were made or from myself, anything that was corrected from Allah Azza wa Jal, and we wish we could give it a greater haq, but we can't spend all of our time in this matter or even other matters. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas, with the bat. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyin wa muhammad.